you've ever used a computer before, you've probably seen a boot manager of some sort. Whether it's Grub or Systemd Boot, you've probably seen these and interacted with them in some form or fashion. Basically, a boot manager simply does what it's supposed to do. It boots you into the selected operating system, and it allows you to change between operating systems if you have different ones installed. So say, for example, you have Windows and Ubuntu installed, you can use the boot manager to switch between those during boot so that you can choose where you want to go. Most people don't actually ever mess with these things. If you have Grub up and running, for example, you probably want that thing to stay up and running because you need it in order to boot into your operating system. I've always been under the impression that you don't want to touch that thing. If it works, you want to leave it working because if you don't, your whole system is broken. But there are alternatives out there and today we're going to be talking about one of them called Refind. And Refind is basically the prettiest boot manager you can find out there. It allows you to do things like change the background, like make the selections for your operating systems into icons, which is basically the default layout for Refind. It's really cool, very customizable, and it's very simple to actually set up and use, which is something that surprised me because, again, I thought that when you had a boot manager, you just kind of wanted to leave it alone and not touch it, otherwise it might break. So today we're going to talk about Refind, but before we jump in, if you'd leave a thumbs up on this video, I'd really appreciate it. It'd really help the channel. So first, let's talk about what Refind is. It's a boot manager. That's what it is. Now, it doesn't necessarily replace the boot manager you already have. It depends on the operating system that you're using. Sometimes it will sit in front of Grub. Sometimes it will replace Grub. It really does depend on how you have your system set up. So it may or may not replace it. But you will see it upon first boot no matter what as long as you have it installed properly and set up properly. And what you're going to be seeing here now in the B-roll is actually what Refine looks like. It's a background of some sort with a selection of icons when it comes to the operating systems you have installed, you will select the one that you want to boot into, press enter, and it will take you to that operating system. It's a boot manager, right? So the real difference here between this and other boot managers is the customization. Now, so I guess the question then is what's the difference between Refind and something like Grub or Systemd Boot? And all three of these are customizable, but I feel like Refind is easier to customize than either Grub or Systemd Boot. Grub, from what I know of it, and I've never actually done much customizing of it, needs some specific tools in order to customize it. And it requires a little bit more knowledge of Grub itself, where I have very little knowledge of Refine, or at least I did when I first started, I was able to customize it right out of the box. It was very, very simple. So that's what I find the differences are. Also, Refine is EFI only. That means if you're using legacy BIOS in order to boot into your system, you're not going to be able to use Refind. But I don't think that that's a big deal because the vast majority of people use UEFI these days. So chances are that's not a limitation you'll find vexing. So let's go ahead and then and talk about installation. Installation is astonishingly easy on most distributions. So you can install this on Ubuntu with apt, just sudo apt install Refind. That's R-E-F-I-N-D. That's all you have to do on Fedora and on OpenSUSE, it's a little bit more difficult, so I'm going to actually show you this real quick. In order to install it on OpenSUSE, for example, you have to go to this URL where it, all of the source files are, find the most recent version, and then download the RPM, which is this one here. Now, you can also get the dev package, so if you are going to use this on Debian or Ubuntu and you might want the most recent version, you can just grab that and then use dpkg or app to install it. So I actually have that RPM file in my downloads folder. In order to install it on OpenSUSE, I do sudo zipper install and then the name of the RPM package, which is that. And I just hit enter, it'll install it. And that's all there is to it. I thought that there was going to be some dependencies there, but there wasn't for me. So I, I don't know what that's like on Ubuntu or Debian, but it was that simple on OpenSUSE and OpenSUSE is not as popular as Debian or Ubuntu. So I'm assuming that it's just as easy elsewhere. So once it's installed, everything you need to know is in slash boot, slash EFI, slash EFI, slash refined. Now, all of the stuff here is stuff you're probably never going to mess around with, but there are two things we're going to take a look at. First is the refined configuration file. So we'll do refined.conf like so. It'll ask for your password. I actually have to spell things right. 
Actually, in order to use that, I do have to use a text editor of some kind. I don't know why I was doing it that way, but whatever. We'll go ahead and do this. Now, in, in this file, there's a lot of things that you can control. So you can change how long Refind will stay up before it just moves you on to the previous selection automatically. You can change the action it will take after the timeout. So usually, by default, it will just take you to the previously selected operating system. But you can also set it to shut down your computer instead in case you don't make a selection, whichever one works best for you. There are a ton of different options in here. I'm not going to go through all of them, but the one that I want to show you first, or most importantly, I suppose, is this one right here. So if you have a, a computer that has a resolution over 720p, you'll want to come here and change the resolution to 1920 by 1080 or 4K or 1440, whatever resolution you're using. And that will allow the prettiness of Refine to come through instead of being kind of squished, which is what it will be by default. So you'll want to come into this configuration file and change that resolution. That way it doesn't look weird. So that's the really the only setting that I actually messed with. All the rest of the defaults are fine. But you can come in here and change the size of the mouse pointer if the thing that you use has a mouse pointer. You can change the font. You can change the size of the font. You can change the speed of the mouse. You can change all sorts of different things in this configuration file and the best part is everything is very well commented so it tells you exactly what each of these sections does you don't have to worry about guessing you don't have to worry about going to find a man page or any of that stuff it just works really well now there are some things here you'll probably not want to you know mess around with you never know what they do and, the, and you, you do kind of want to make sure this stays working so stay away from things that you don't absolutely know what they do but because it's so well documented, you shouldn't have too big of a problem. And if there's something there that you need to, to find, you should be able to search for that fairly easily. So that's the configuration file. Like I said, there are a ton of options here. We're only about halfway through scrolling. I and mean, if we go all the way down, there's over 750 lines here of stuff that you can just mess around with if you have need to do so. Now, most of it you'll, again, like me, just have no need for. But you can if you need to, which is nice. The other thing we want to take a look at here in this directory is the themes folder. Now this probably doesn't exist for you out of the box, but you can create it and then you can download pre-made themes or make your own and put them here. So you can come to this website here and see exactly what kind of themes you can download. So most of these are going to rely on GitHub. You'll just go find a repo and then it will tell you exactly how you need to install them. But you can see that there are a ton of different themes here for you to use. You can use ones with colored icons and this type of background. You can have it set up so that it looks like this or this or whatever you want to do. There's just a ton of these things and all of them have their kind of unique flair. They have used different icons, different backgrounds, what have you. And it's just very easy to do. So let's just say, let's go ahead and set my theme. So let's go ahead and use this one here and actually change my theme. So this is what the GitHub repository looks like. It's actually fairly simple. We're going to actually go ahead and grab the link to this repository and we'll then we'll go back to our terminal and we're going to do sudo git clone. Remember you're in the root directory so you're going to need sudo and then copy that URL. It's going to ask for your repos your password and then we should have two themes there now and it's going to tell you in this repository exactly what you need to do. So you need to find your EFI directory, which we've done, and on Linux, it looks like this, probably. It may be different for you, so just keep that in mind, but it should be here. And then you create the themes directory, which we've already done. We already cloned the repository for the theme. And then all it asks us to do is do this in our refine.conf file. So I'm going to control C that. I'm going to CD up a level. I'm going to do sudo and vim or vim or nano or whatever you want to use, refined.conf. I'm going to go all the way to the bottom. I'm going to paste this that we just did and I'll delete the one I had before. I'll leave a space there. Oops, get out of that. And then I'll save this. So now when I reboot and I'll show you a picture of this, I will now have a theme that looks like this. Now mine has some obviously different OS is there. I have Windows and OpenSUSE along with a couple other things and it will show me all of those things. So that's how easy it is to switch themes.
there's nothing more to it. And like I said, if you want to, you can actually go into those themes and there's usually a theme configuration file. So we could, if we do sudo nvim theme.conf, like so, it, this will allow you to change the background. If you want to change the background, you can change the scale of the background, how big the icons are, and so on and so forth. That's just theme specific. That way, if you change between themes or it needs a different, you know, bigger set of icons, whatever, you can change those right inside of the theme configuration file. And you can also go into the background folder and just see all the backgrounds that you have there. So if you want to change the background, just copy the background that you want into this, name it background.png, and there you go. You've changed the background. So you can change the color to change to whatever, you know, your favorite anime character, whatever. It's as simple as that. You can also go into the icons directory and see what icons they use. Now, I would am not as ambitious as some other people, so I'm not going to change any of the icons, but you could go into this directory and change the icons if you want to. You can also change the things like font and stuff, but that's probably better suited for the regular refine.com where you can kind of control the fonts there. A lot of themes don't actually use fonts at all, so just kind of keep that in mind. If you have a ton of operating systems installed and you don't know what they are or you have multiple versions of Windows or multiple versions of, of Linux and it doesn't happen to show you the right icon, chances are you're going to have to kind of guess. So like it shows me two versions of OpenSUSE. Sometimes I have to figure out which one it is. I don't actually have two versions of OpenSUSE installed, so I'm not sure why it does that. I'll have to figure that out. But other than that, that's all there is to refine. And overall, like I said, this is a really cool tool and it was astonishingly easy to use. It's just, you just install it, you change the theme and you're on your way. That's really all there is to it. Now, a couple provisos. First off, like I said at the beginning, there's the sense that if you mess around with your boot manager, something might go wrong. And that still could be the case. Like this could mess my computer up. So, as is with all the stuff that goes on with this kind of stuff, you want to make sure that you have your backups in place. Back your shit up always, and you'll be happy if you ever find yourself in a situation where your computer won't boot. That way you have the stuff if you need it. It's always the thing that you should do. So, back up your stuff. Also, there's not really any benefit to Refine that I know other than just making it look better. There might be ones that I just don't know, but for me personally, this is just an aesthetic change. So overall, you know, you're not going to go find better performance. And actually, I th what I've seen so far on my computer is actually a little worse performance. The boot time has slowed down a little bit because it takes longer after the initial post to show refined than it ever did grub. Not a lot, just a few extra partial seconds but it was noticeable. So just kind of keep that in mind that this may slow your boot time down a little bit, but you're doing this for aesthetics, not performance. It's for looks and feel, not for performance. So just kind of keep that in mind. If you have any questions on any of this stuff or you have thoughts on it, you can leave those in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. Again, I apologize for the focus on the camera. I don't know what's going on there. Uh, Ha it, the focus is off, so it shouldn't focus on any autofocus at all, but I don't I don't know. Anyways, you can follow me on Mastodon. That link will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. You can also support me on Ko-fi and YouTube. Those links will be in the video description. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you so very, very much for your support. I truly do appreciate it. If you too would like to support me, patreon.com slash linuxcast, YouTube, Kofi, or you can head on over to the store, which is available at shop.thelinuxcast.org. There you'll find all sorts of awesome merch, all the proceeds for which goes directly towards helping me make more Linux content for you guys. So thank you so very much for those of you who have done that. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.